day by day and year by year. We give you our thanks for coffee conversation, familiar surroundings, and for open doors and open hearts. Hospitality and volunteers who dedicate their service in church and in community. We give you our thanks for hearts that forgive, for enthusiasm to live, for music that moves and prayers that seek understanding and peace. We worship you with joy. For creativity and deeds done in service of neighbor and stranger for the words that honor you as Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. We worship you, God, with grateful hearts and joyful spirit. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Please remain as you are for our opening song. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning and happy late Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving weekend. We're so delighted to see you here today and so happy that you joined us in worship on this beautiful, beautiful California sunny day. I know that's unusual around here. Uh, see, you got to make sure you're awake. If you are new with us today, we want to say a very welcome, well, um, warm welcome to you today. Uh, any new folks with us, would you wave at me? Amen. Let's give them a hand. We welcome you, and we're so glad that you are w joining us today in worship. And if you don't have a church home, we hope that you will make this home. We want to say uh, welcome to our folks who are joining us online if you are online today, would you please sign in and let us know. You can check in online. And those of you who are here in the audience, um, make sure that you check in on social media and let people know it's time for church. And they can join us for worship today live here at MCC in Los Angeles. And for those of you who are always with us, who are so faithful and such a blessing to not only me, but to this community and uh, to, I think, the world. 
we say welcome and we're glad you're here. And now I invite you to welcome one another with the sign of peace. This morning's first reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 150, verses 1 through 6, and we'll be reading from the, the New King James translation. Praise the Lord. Praise God in this mighty sanctuary. Oops, sorry. Praise, yeah, praise God in this sanctuary. Praise him in this mighty firmament. Praise God for these mighty acts. Praise God according to God's excellent greatness. Praise God with the sound of the trumpet. Praise God with the lute and the harp. Praise God with the timbrel and dance. Praise God with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise God with loud cymbals. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please rise as you are able. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 33, and we're reading from the Message Translation. If you decide for God, living a life that is God-worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what is on the table at mealtimes, or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God, and you count far more to God than birds. Has anyone, by fussing in front of the mirror, ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All that time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think that it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out in the fields and look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop. But have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The ten best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think God will attend to you, take pride in you, do God's best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to be not so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way God works Fuss over these things, but you know God and how God works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Hear what the Spirit says today.
begin. You may be seated. Don't you love the scriptures? I love when I'm, uh, one of the things I'm thankful about, I think at this church more than any other uh, that I've ever been in, whenever people are reading the scriptures, I hear all these oohs, oh, oh my, oh yes. (laughs) And this is supposed to be one of the most formal of our services, and yet people speak out because the spirit is resonating in each of us as we hear those words And I love that the Spirit is in this place even at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. The Spirit is up even if we are not totally up. How about that? In our first reading today, it starts out about our praising God. It's one, I think it's probably my favorite of the Psalms. It's the last of the Psalms. And it talks about praising God with this instrument. And that is, those of you that don't know, I'm I'm a musician and I play keyboards and You'll find maybe you will hear some of that shortly. But I, I love that in this particular scripture, there's a list. They enumerate all of these instruments that we can praise God with. And as a child, I remember learning that uh, for a school class. I went to a Christian school in my middle school, and we had to learn scriptures every week uh, for grades. And I remember learning the, the, the Psalm 150, the whole Psalm 150, and how much it really spoke to me. And I loved that one in particular because it spoke to the musicians. And it said, even what you're doing with your talent, even let the piano praise the Lord, let the drums praise the Lord, let the organ praise the Lord, even these inanimate objects, let them praise the Lord. And I love that. I love that even things we don't think about praising God can praise God. And then, if that's not all of it, when you get to the last verse, it ends with, let everything that has breath. It's not just the inanimate objects. It's everything. Everything that has breath. And we know even plants breathe. Everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Now, I know that there are lots of things in this world that are concerning and worrisome. There are a lot of things to be angry about. There are a lot of things to stay angry about. And trust me, I've been through a lot of that this week. Here's the problem. I can't live in that mess or messiness all the time. I can't live in that negativity all the time. Even if I tried to, if I just opened my eyes and start looking around me, I might find something to give praise about. Now, if you don't think you can, then maybe we should look at the second reading. (laughs) The second reading says that we can go out and take a walk. Maybe that's really good when we're angry or aggravated or have feeling the, the gauge of emotions. That we go out and take a walk. And when life gets messy and negative, maybe we need to take a walk. But you see, it's not just taking a walk. It's not just the walking, even though that does us good. It's the clearing of the mind to start with, but it's also a shift, you see. Because it's not just about getting rid of what's there. It's about taking in what's around me. It's about other inanimate objects giving God praise. It's about looking at the wildflowers. And I loved in that scripture, most wildflowers are never even seen. They just grow other places. Now, I will tell you, um, Brother Mark was our reader today. He is an amazing photographer, and I love looking at his work. I love looking at, he captures all these things, and he edits and edits. But I I love it when he says to me things like, you know, this is so beautiful, I don't have to do anything except crop the picture. This is already, he finds beauty in places he's doing this collection. What are those things called? The boxes, electrical boxes? Electrical boxes on the corners, and they're painted all over town, and he, he, 
He's got coffee. I'm getting him, I'm getting him to publish. At least I'm working on him. He needs to be selling this stuff. <laughs> um, Christmas is coming, brother. We need presents. <laughs> Just saying. These are great coffee table books. And, the, and then once you start looking, it's like, man, he's got me looking all over town at every corner now. I have to really... I, sometimes you pray for a red light just so you can watch the things. <laughs> Ain't that something? Now, you know it's impressive when that happens. In North Carolina, where I'm from, when you drive down the interstate, you will find at almost every single exit there are wildflowers growing. Why? It was done on purpose. They were actually sown there uh, on purpose to beautify the areas. And a lot of times the medians in between the, the lanes going in opposite directions will have flowers. And, it, and someone came through there and said, you know, we, may, we need to... One of our governor's wives decided that North Carolina needed to be beautified when you're just driving and getting bored going down the interstate. And what better way than to see all of these different flowers? And it always amazes me when I go home to drive down the, I just love to drive the interstates and look. At, you kind of start looking for it all of a sudden. You're looking for these beautiful flowers and the colors and the richness. Now, I love beautiful colors and I love, and, and evidently the professionals that do our clothes do that too. You know, I used to watch all of those fashion shows on, on cable network. I don't have cable anymore, so I don't see them as much. But I used to love Project Runway. That was my favorite one. And always the professionals, I remember there was one particular year that they were talking about, they were, they were doing their own designs, and then they were able to go out and pull the colors that they wanted. And I remember the professionals saying, you will not get anything more beautiful than the colors of nature. If what God has already given us, what has been created for us, look at the birds, look at the flowers, if you look at the birds and the flowers, it will put you in a very different space than what you've been in. So like I said this week, uh, and I'll make a confession to you, both my parents are gone. And, I, you know, on, a, on holidays I do miss them. And, and they've been gone for a long, long, long time. And I, I, some, most holidays I can get through and be pretty good. But some are harder than others. And it seems like when there's other stuff going on around, whether it's exceptionally good or exceptionally bad, so you're feeling those emotions, I have had things going in total opposite directions this week. I've been so angry with our administration. I've been angry about the things that have been said about transgender people coming from the White House. I've been so angry about what is being said about refugees coming to our borders. And knowing, knowing that so many, the, the first people that arrived, and I don't know if you saw this or heard this, the first people from that group of people that were coming were the GLBTQ people. And one of the reasons that they got there soon, uh, so much earlier, is some of them were ostracized from the rest of the group. You see, it's not just here you get ostracized. It's all over the place. People that should know better, people that have the commonality of fleeing danger and wanting a better life. Yeah, I've been angry to the nth. You know, one night I was on Facebook and I was posting one thing after another because I was so angry and that was my outlet. And then at some point I was like, I am so angry I won't even be able to sleep. And I kept remembering, you know, my prayer partner, Carol, in North Carolina. I could just hear her in the back of my, my head saying, you need to stop this. You need to stop this. Sometimes you just have to pull yourself away from it. Even though it's happening, even though it's horrible, you have to pull yourself away from it. And then I come out here on Thursday, and we must have fed at least 50 young people, kids, that are not... They don't have a permanent roof over their head. At least 50. 
because it was 11 to 3, and, it, and, you know, they would filter in and filter out. And I, I asked two or three people to keep a list of people, of our folks that were coming in to volunteer or coming in to eat, and we must have had at least 100 of our own people throughout the day. I don't think anybody really got the whole list because people were shifting in and shifting out, and a lot of people, like Mark, came in and handed me food and said, I can't stay, but I wanted to make sure we had food. People but brought food that didn't even stay. And people that went out and shopped and people that did all sorts of things, cooked, and it was just amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen the pictures, go to my Facebook page. You'll see lots and lots of pictures. And there are several of us that were here. Make sure that you go back and look at those. Yes, we've had a messy week with lots of things. And we may have been missing those people that have gone on to glory. But look at what God is doing on the other extreme, you see. There was negative, but there was a lot of positive. You know, I was so impressed. Reverend Alex uh, got up on, before we started on Thursday, and he said, Now, don't preach to these people coming in. We're not on a recruiting mission. When the last time you heard a preacher say that? <laughs> he said, don't engage them in religious conversation. This is about service. This is about us serving. It is us serving. We are not talking about Jesus. We are being Jesus. We are not, we're not going to go in there and tell them we're the hands and the feet and the heart of God. We're going to go in there and be the hands and the feet and the heart of God. And several of them said, are you doing this at Christmas? And I said, count on it. And when we were in our creative team, we'll, we'll nail this down this week one way or the other, but people are like, well, we're going to have a Christmas Day service? I'm like, well, we're having Christmas Eve. We're having two services. Do we need one on Christmas Day, or do we need to serve on Christmas Day? Maybe we need to be service and do service, not in here, but somewhere else. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, that's what Christmas then really is about. Well, I have lots to be thankful for, but this is the Thanksgiving season, and if you're new with us, uh, or it's been a while since you've been with us, this is not usual, but uh, I have this tradition. This is Keith's tradition. This is not anybody else's. This is Keith's tradition that usually the Sunday before or the Sunday after Thanksgiving, I give you an opportunity to share a blessing or share something of thanksgiving that you would like to share. You know, when I grew up in the Pentecostal church on Wednesday nights, you never left Wednesday night without two or three people having testimonies. And those testimonies were about what other people were going through, and we drew strength and faith by being blessed by what God had done for them. And so um, I want... Now look, here's the way this works, though. These are not sermonette times, and I know how a couple of you people are. I know how, uh, uh, there are some of you, if I give you a microphone, you're going to preach for 30 minutes. <laughs> no. Here's the way it works. You get two minutes at the most. Two minutes. We're going to time you, and uh, if, if that doesn't, uh, Camille's up there. Camille, keep the time watch. Two minutes. Cut it off. We'll just have to find out after service what the rest of your testimony was. But in order for us to hear several people, I want us to do that. And then Jane and I are going to do a little... Before Jim comes up here, because I know he's going to have a testimony, but before he comes up here, there may be some other people that have something. Anybody want to give us a word? You can come up to the microphone so we can hear you. Oh, don't be shy. All right. I met Steve in 
1976 at MCC Good Shepherd in Chicago. And if it wasn't for this church, I wouldn't have had my brother. I wouldn't have met Ken Martin. But this church feeds me. It meets that need that I have, and it helps me be of service. It helps me be God's hands and feet in this world that really, really needs it. And I am just so grateful, so grateful. Thank you. Along those lines, I'm grateful for our pastor, our new senior pastor, Reverend Keith McGinnis. And I'm grateful to see several people back, uh, Larry Rodriguez at the organ, and uh, Jane Sitzestad at the piano, our music director, and, uh, and Darcel back from her six-week journey. Uh, and uh, glad to have you all back. Yes. And Steve Swafford, I thank you all for I thank you all for being the church. Uh, you have been the church for me in good and bad times, and I thank you all. And I'm grateful for my health today. Yes. Amen. Yes. This has to do with Thursday, and all of us that got together, whether for the entire day or just a half hour or two hours, but the gift that we gave each other of getting together and doing something together as a family, and no one had to be told, well, go do that. I kept looking around, and people just started doing things and found projects that they, they could do to help to make the whole. Amen. I am grateful because after being excommunicated from many churches because I'm gay, I found Founders MCC. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. grateful that I had more than enough in my refrigerator to feed these couples um, down the street from me that were living down the street. And they didn't have to be gay, they didn't have to be trans, it was just another human being, just like me. Amen. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. I'm grateful for this church, for waking up this day, for God giving me the opportunity to find a new way of living. And that is a gift. Thank you. Yes. Right. Amen. goes without saying that we all love this church. I've never seen a church that reaches out its hands to help everyone. We're surrounded by a lot of negative, and we see this negative every day. But this church gives us hope because it lifts us up because we help. As Art said, we're helping people who have nothing. I've never seen a church do so much for people who have nothing. Thank you, everyone, for doing that. Amen. I'm looking that way. <laughs> All right, if there's a law, you get a gift. Maybe a gift. <laughs> this is for Jim. He's been asking for this for a long time. It's not our usual nine o'clock fair. 
Okay. <laughs> do you want an intro? I do want an intro. <laughs> Jim, do you have a testimony now? <laughs> Can it just be a thank you? Thank you. Jim, for those of you who don't know Jim, Jim comes from a different background similar to mine, and he loves the fast and raring and the old-fashioned, we call them the Red Back Hymn Book songs. It's called it a church hymnal. Those songs came out of back in the 1800s, 19, early 1900s, and it was originally just a little trivia for you. It originally said Church of God hymnal because it came from the Church of God and it was printed at Tennessee Printing uh, Company in Cleveland, Tennessee, which is the home of the Church of God. But they found that other people wanted to sing the songs and they could sell a lot more books if they took the of God off there and just put church hymnal. So if you see, they're, they're red and they're green, but most of the churches had the red back hymn book. So they're just known as those red back hymn books all over the South, and there, lots of people have them. And they were shape notes, for those of you who know what it is. All the whole book is shape notes, uh, and some of you know what that means. Anyway, Jim loves those songs, and every week he begs us and pleads with us to do some of that stuff. And uh, Jim, uh, Jane and I have already been talking about it, and, and in the new year we're going to have some hymn sing-alongs in the evening, uh, for you to come. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Sometimes uh, the, the theology doesn't make sense anymore because that was 1800s theology and not 1900s and 2000s theology. And some of it we've just learned better. And so sometimes it's hard to sing any of those old songs. And uh, so sometimes we just sing a little bit and we play a little bit. So you can just kind of hum along with whatever you want, and if it still feeds you, that's good, and if it doesn't, well, you know. There's, <laughs> there's something new on the horizon. How about that? Amen. We've had a lot to be thankful for this week, and I thank you for sharing your blessings with us. And if you haven't, if you haven't really spent some time this week away from people, because it's time for us to get together, but if you haven't spent some time away from people, go out and find some birds and some wildflowers this week. Amen.
I'm Roger Owens. I am the clerk of the, what am I? Board of Directors Clerk. Thank you. <laughs> We've got a few announcements today. First of all, we like to, um, I've got a little story for you. Reverend Keith brought up beautifying and how gorgeous flowers and wildflowers are, and we don't get to see them. I grew up in Washington, D.C., and when the Johnson, when President Johnson was president, Lady Bird decided that she would go around D.C. and beautify Washington, D.C. We had a lot at the bottom of our street that was just a regular lot. The city bought it. They brought in a playground, and they filled it with wildflowers. And the greatest thing about the wildflowers was it was in the middle of the city. So you had beauty in the middle of the city. And not only that, the park service, you could go down to the park service and you could pick up the same wildflowers and they could be growing in your yard. So throughout Washington, D.C., as hectic as it is, as concrete as it is, wildflowers grew everywhere. So our announcements today, um, Trans, Trans Day of Remembrance is today. And um, we need to, re it's unfortunate that we need to remember but we need to remember those people that have gone before us. Those people who have led the way. Sometimes in just speaking, sometimes in just smiling, sometimes in just being who they are. We remember. On December 1st, we're gonna decorate the sanctuary and decorate downstairs and decorate all over. Norm Cotts will be here and he is such a decorating fairy that he will have us all decorated to the nines. On December 2nd, training for altar guild and worship participants at 10 a.m. And that's also going to be repeated on uh, December 16th. So if you are a worship participant or would like to become a worship participant, please go to a workshop, see what we do, see how we do it, and then change it. <laughs> <laughs> For our participants online, we're so glad you're here with us today. And at this time, if you would like to collect items for communion, which we will be serving in just a few minutes, please do so. Now, as the ushers come forward, you've had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Show God how much you're thankful for. Thank you. And we have a second offering of HopeNet, I'm sorry, Helping Hands, which is a conglomeration of HopeNet, what else? Brown bag. Brown bag and other, and Paul Gromberg. So please give accordingly. Thank you.
Please remain standing for the great thanksgiving and the prayers of the people. Loving and generous God, this offering tells your story, the story of how you, your generosity, has met our needs, how you have heard our prayers, and how your goodness is from everlasting to everlasting. We humbly pray, therefore, that you bless and multiply these offerings given today. And in doing so, the love that we share through these gifts may bless those who seek to know you more intimately. Amen. Amen. Therefore, with a grateful heart, we say, may God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is a good, right, and joyful thing to give you thanks, most holy, gracious, kind, and gentle God. You are the creator who breathes all life into being. Even as we thank you for our lives, we also pray that you give us the eyes to see your creation as you do. As greed, and the desire for power overwhelm and control many in the world. So nations and peoples are displaced and uncountable numbers of people, each with a name, each with a face, each with loved ones, are thrown into confusion and despair. Holy God, give us hearts to feel their pain and respond with your love. Brother Jesus, you walk the earth touching those in pain, bringing hope to a chaotic world. We want to lift to you, particularly our transgender sisters and brothers whose lives have been senselessly taken from us this past year. We will not forget them and may their lives inspire us to be agents of hope for the hopeless and agents of love for those who feel they are unlovable. <clears throat> Today is becoming for so many in power and even in our churches the forgotten and hidden community. Shine your light anew on the loneliness and isolation on all those who feel distance from your love. Let your church be your hands, your heart, your feet in the world, going where others fear to go, bringing your healing touch of inclusivity. Holy Spirit, you pass through and between your people. Fill us again with your wisdom that in the infinity of time, from one sec second to another, you guide us, your people into knowing your will for those we encounter. Let us take a moment of silence and give God thanks for blessings received and to pray for those in need. for these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, we pray to God as we sing together a prayer in the spirit of the way Jesus taught us to pray.
Please be seated. We remember Jesus Christ who invites all who are thirsty to come and be fed, who earnestly prayed for all of us, even in the face of betrayal and crucifixion, and who calls us to break bread together, to love one another, and include all those who desire to share in this great table fellowship. And we remember on that night when you took the bread, you blessed it, and you broke it, and you said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. After the meal in a like manner, you took the cup, you blessed it, and you said, take, drink, for this is the cup of forgiveness given for you and for all. Take and drink, all of you, for this is my blood, this is my life, this is my covenant with you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please pray with me. God of all power, just as the Holy Spirit of life embodied Jesus in the tomb, so now breathe your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the life of Christ. May we be empowered to make that life visible through our actions of love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At Founders MCC, as with all MCCs around the world, this is an open table. You need not belong to this church or any church to participate fully in this feast. We have both regular and gluten-free wafers, just let your server know. And if you prefer to receive communion with no human intervention, please know that we have set aside sacred elements to our left, your right, where you can be at one with God. All are welcome and invited to this table of love, mercy, and freedom, wherever you are on your life or spiritual journey. Come as the ushers guide you. The feast is ready, and God invites us to join in the feast. Will the acolytes, ushers, and servers please come forward?
And again, if you're new with us, we're delighted that you came to worship with us, and we hope that you will be back. And if you don't have a church home, welcome. You're home now. Amen. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song? A couple of things before we go. Um, I know we've started doing our hospitality out in the courtyard, but today there's food downstairs, and we're going to be serving uh, a meal after the 11 o'clock service. So if you want to hang around, you know, you can eat with us. We would love for you to come and eat with us. We have lots of food downstairs. Some more food came in this morning. And so go downstairs and have some lunch with us. I think they may have some desserts uh, and some coffee ready for you for now. Um, also, I just want to say next week we start the Advent season. Yes, and uh, we're doing uh, Christmas through the classics. And so each week I will give you a little homework to do. It should not be very difficult. Uh, it means taking maybe a couple hours out of your time to watch TV, you know, or a video. Uh, so uh, let's just say that you should uh, look at something that has a red nose on it this week. <laughs> and then you'll be ready for the message for next Sunday. So uh, take a look at Rudolph this week if you haven't done so lately. You shouldn't have any problem. It should be playing over and over on TV this week. And uh, I think you can look at it online. So come and see how that relates to us today. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this time we have together. Thank you that you have given us the wildflowers and the birds and the inanimate objects that can even sing your praises. And we ask now that as we depart from this place that we know that your love is real for us, that we know that we walk in your presence and you walk in us that we are called to be the hands and the feet and the heart of Christ in our community. Therefore, let us go from this place and serve. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 Shake hands and be friendly. <laughs>